has been in between the five or six years, you know, which is great. As is usual, our style, we're running about two or three minutes late, so we, I promise we'll finish two or three minutes early. Um, <coughs> Commissioner Strickland will not be joining us this evening, and uh, we still have our quorum president, so I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Um, we'll start with a, a pledge to our flag, a moment of prayer, and before we stand up, could I ask if you've got a phone? Could I get you just to check that it's maybe in the quiet mode, whatever that mode is? All right, let's go ahead and stand up. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Heavenly Father, we ask you once again to guide our efforts here tonight. Make sure, uh, Lord, our minds are clear. We conduct business uh, professionally in a way that would uh, be pleasing unto you. As we depart, Lord, I watch over us safely home. Forgive us of our sins. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. First, uh, our first item of business is we have a, a proclamation here that I'm going to ask the commissioners to uh, vote to approve this at the, uh, when I get through reading it. Proclamation recognizing April as the National Donate Life Month. Madison County is one of uh, a number of counties throughout the state. We all are associated with this uh, uh, an organization that is about um, providing life-saving means, whether it's a, uh, organ tissue, uh, various ways to donate in the, uh, uh, you know, tragedies occur and trying to make the best of that situation. So this uh, this proclamation, though, is just to really set aside uh, April as a month to to uh, recognize that. So I'm going to read. This is, again, National Donate Life Month, April 2019. Whereas one of the most meaningful gifts that a human being can bestow upon another is the gift of life. And whereas more than 113 men, women, and children await life-saving or life-enhancing organ transplant, of which over 5,100 reside in Georgia, and whereas the need for organ, eye, and tissue donation grows daily as a new patient is added to the national waiting list for an organ transplant every 10 minutes, and whereas the critical donor shortage remains a public health crisis as an average of 22 people die daily due to the lack of available organs. And whereas organ, eye, and tissue donation can provide families the comfort of knowing the gift of donated organ and tissue endows another person with renewed hope for a healthy life. And whereas donating life through, the, uh, through organ, eye, and tissue donation is the ultimate act of generosity and kindness we Madison County, Georgia citizens can perform. And whereas more than 4.8 million Georgians have already registered their decision to give the gift of life at www.donatelifegeorgia.org, the Board of Commissioners of Madison County, Georgia, do hereby proclaim April 2019 to be Donate Life Month in Madison County and to honor all those who made the decision to give the gift of life to focus attention on the extreme need for organ, eye, and tissue donation to encourage all residents to take action and sign up on Georgia's donor registry at www.donatelifegeorgia.org to discuss the miracle of transplantation as a family and to make a family commitment to organ, eye, and tissue donation so resolved by the Madison County Board of Commissioners on this first day of April 2019. And with that, I'll ask the uh, commissioners for a vote to approve this proclamation. So moved, Jim. Second. I have a motion and a second. 
And we'll start a vote with Commissioner Allen. Yes. 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 And I would like to highlight that uh, we have uh, a couple of folks here tonight that are um, very involved with the donation and the association, Life Link of Georgia, uh, Coroner Deputy Bank, Julie Phillips, Mr. Gerald Kemp, and we appreciate that they're at the uh, leading tip of that sphere when it comes to uh, making the contact and that connection for families and uh, families in need, families who are wanting to donate. So, very good. So one of the one of the things that's uh, probably the, the more enjoyable things we get to do is to, to recognize those types of organizations. Our next uh, item is business involving guest groups from multiple visitors. And I've got Ms. Irene Shane, come on up. Uh, uh, Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. And uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read, I'm not gonna take up any of her time. I would like, she's gonna, gonna make a short presentation uh, discussing some possible opportunities and information available. Okay. Great. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I came I came on a really good evening because I'm a live donor. Uh, two years ago, actually in April, two years ago, I donated a kidney to a stranger. And I have to tell you that it was one of the best things I've ever done. And you never know that you're missing a kidney. Um, so it was, I, I'm so glad to hear that. Definitely. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity to come and speak with you. My name is Irene Shane, and I was appointed as a volunteer citizen by the Fayette County Board of Commissioners to serve on the department, the Georgia Department of, uh, excuse me, the Georgia Department of Behavioral uh, and I want to explain that behavioral health is mental illnesses and addictive diseases. So the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities to serve on the Region 6 Advisory Council. DBHDD, uh, just as a reminder, and that's the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities, which we all call DBHD, um, is a administers services uh, for people with disabilities um, throughout the state of Georgia. And when we talk about disabilities, we are talking about mental illnesses, addictive diseases, and developmental disabilities. By law, every Georgia county has at <coughs> least one citizen seat on a regional advisory council. So there are six regional advisory councils in the state and survey that is being conducted by all six regional advisory councils. And this is, of course, with the permission of DBHDD. This is a statewide survey, and, um, and, and, and it's important to us because what we do as a regional advisory council is we are a link, the link, the strong connection between DBHDD and the communities and between our communities and our counties and DBHDD. So one of the things we do is tell DBHDD what is and what is not working in our counties. And this survey is going to help us out on that. I want to tell you about the survey and that's what I'll focus on. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about my story that led me to the work that I do um, on behalf of Fayette County for the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. In 2001, our youngest son, Logan, had just turned 12 in September. And he just turned 12 when he had his first episode of mental illness. And I have to tell you, before that, Logan was a happy, healthy, funny 12-year-old, typical 12-year-old. And all of a sudden, he had a first episode and it didn't stop with the first episode. He did what we call decompensate. He went downhill. Uh, he decompensated very, very rapidly, and he went from a typical 12-year-old in a two-month period of time to a terrified individual who believed that he was a criminal. He believed, falsely, but he believed it, he believed that he was a serial arsonist, 
He also believed that he had spread AIDS throughout the community. And probably the most serious thing was he took sole responsibility for the 9-11 tragedy. Now this was serious. This was very serious and we as parents were dumbfounded. We had no idea what on earth was going on, but we belonged, we lived in Washington State at the time, and we belonged to a health management organization. So we simply called them and said, help. And our doctor, who had been our family doctor for 20 years, said to me, Irene, I'm sorry, this is, this is our, our uh, general internist. He said, I'm sorry, uh, because I was on the phone with him, said, I'm sorry, but I don't treat people with mental illness you need to call the counseling department. So I called counseling. This was in September, or actually early October of 2001. And they said, well, you can see a counselor if you'd like, but if you want to see a psychiatrist, we can make you an appointment in April 2002. And I said, that won't work, because our son at this point must have 24-hour, seven-day-a-week care that's how fast he decompensated. We were very fortunate in that we had the resources and the accessibility to, to find help. And when I talk about resources, I'm talking about financial resources. And so we did. And he immediately went into intensive, intensive therapy with a counselor, actually a, a psychologist, and as well as seeing a psychiatrist, and he went into drug therapy. Now, it takes a while, but it didn't take very long. This was very early in this mental illness for Logan. And so it took about two more months before the counseling took hold and the, the drugs took hold, and we got our typical 12-year-old back. And he stayed typical. He was in recovery. He was, it, it took a while, but he saved my son's life. And I said at that time, it's not fair that only people who can afford to intervene, who can afford early intervention, get that opportunity to get their children back. And so I said, when I retired from the university, I would indeed dedicate the rest of my life to helping people with mental illness get the services they need. And that's what led me to being on the advisory council. So early intervention is one need, and it's an important one, but there are a lot of other needs that are out there as well. And that's what this survey is all about, and I want to turn to this. You have that, the survey in front of you, and, and I don't have it in front of me. Let me grab it. Um, this is uh, a, a survey that's being done throughout the state. I am really happy to say that um, as of sitting in the parking lot tonight, I checked the numbers and we are at 6,900. So 6,900 surveys have been completed. Now, if you have it in paper, but it is also online, and by far most of, uh, most of the responses that we get are online. This is, it's easy to take. Every single Georgian is welcome to take it. So it's for everybody because you know what? Mental illnesses, addictive diseases, and developmental disabilities touch all of us. We all have a vested interest in this. And so um, this survey, it's easy, it's completely confidential. You'll note that the only personal question on it is, what county do you reside? And that's important, and I'll talk about that in, in just a minute. But let's go ahead and, uh, well, oh, I need to tell you, the findings for this survey, um, and it closes the end of April, the find we will put together a report that will give the findings on a statewide basis, that will give us on a DBHDD regional basis, and also will give the findings to any county that has reached their minimum uh, number of completed surveys. So there's a minimum number, and the minimum number for Madison County is only 25. 
Unfortunately, it's April 1st and we only have three from your county. So we need to get some more so that you can actually hear the voices in your county, what they're saying, compared to the voices in the region and compared to the voices in the state. So let's just take one minute and take a look at this survey. The survey gives us a lot of data, but it also gives the person who is taking it a lot of important information. And you can see that in the very first question, which asks if the reader is familiar with GCAL, what we call GCAL, the Georgia Crisis and Access Line. That's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week line throughout the state of Georgia. Um, and most people do not, at least at this point, most people do not know about that important line. So that talks about that. If you go down to three, this is the Georgia APEX program. It mentions the Georgia APEX program. The APEX program is an in-school mental health program. It's in 300 schools right now. Um, it is proposed in the budget in 2020 to add 8 million. The program is incredibly successful um, to add 8 million. And that program, by the way, is in Elm Care Services. They want transportation. But we also all know that people with, with disabilities have a much more difficult time accessing those things. So that's why we're asking those questions in this survey. This survey offers a lot of opportunity for Madison County. Um, and, and it's important for the entire county, I think, um, because it's the entire county. It takes the entire county to help people with disabilities to save lives like the life of my son. And so we all have a stake in this, and we all want to work on it together. This evening, I'm asking you to only do one thing, and that is to promote this survey in any way that you can. Um, some counties have put the links on their website. Some counties have asked all county employees to take the survey, whether they do it in paper copy or online. Um, I also have promotional cards that I would like to leave with you. Um, the, the survey is in is available online in both English and Spanish. It's identical except in the two different languages. And it's the same as you see on the, on the paper here. Um, so I hope that I can leave these. And I wanted to tell you, Pulaski County, um, Pulaski County had zero returns. And one of the commissioners said, this, this just won't work for me. So she sent out to her constituents uh, an email that said, hey folks, um, we, we're all interested in this, and how about taking this survey? They went from zero to 80 in three days. Uh, so that's how people like the survey. They really do. We just have to get the word out about it. So that's what I'm asking you for, and I appreciate this opportunity, and I'd answer any questions you have. Certainly, thank you, Irene. Is there anybody any questions or any comments for? There's about 25 people in here. Yeah. <laughs> Just on that. Quick question, Mr. Chairman. In the survey, it mentions the Apex program for the schools. I was just curious. Do you know if? that program is in our Madison County School System or not? As I was talking about that, I realized that he didn't check. Um, so I'm a school I teacher, and I, I have not recognized that. And I, mean, I did it. Behind right, the right. Don't have that. Okay. And, and, and uh, I mean, in my opinion, you want to get on it. Uh, I didn't mean that as a criticism. Absolutely. I was just curious. Yeah, they're, they're um, expanding the program. Yeah. And um, it's, you know, the county has to show interest. And, and the county school board has to show an interest in, in getting it, but it's a very successful program. Send this over. Yeah, I'll send it to our superintendent. Yeah. Great. Well, I certainly thank you for not only the uh, the presentation, but mm -hmm. sharing with us your uh, personal connection with it too. So, thank you, sir. Yeah, wish him well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Can I pass these out? You're more than welcome. If you'd like to pass them out to the folks here, that, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. yeah, please feel free to. And thank you again for, thank uh, you for sharing, sharing with us. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Well, uh,
we'll look into seeing uh, um, if we can get that on our website. Perhaps we'll look at it and uh, got a short short period of time to help you out on that. All right. I hope you were helping. <coughs> I get on Facebook. I get on Facebook. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can do that. So. All right. We'll give her just a minute here. All right. Very good. All right. I've been told I say all right a lot. So, all right. Hearing and actions on regional matter special use permits, uh, ETC. We're going to call up Mr. Music, please, Mr. Lamar Houston. Chairman. Let me confuse that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good evening. The first rezone request this evening is Terry and Janelle Powers. They're requesting to rezone their 8.28 .8 acre property from A2 to RR. So they can subdivide two acres to give their daughter for a home site. Property is located on Map 70, Parcel 5 on Colbert Danesville Road in District 5. The vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission was a vote of 7 to 0 to recommend approval of the rezone request. All right. <coughs> what we'll do here, folks, is on each of these actions, uh, if uh, the petitioner, the one who's asking for the application, will offer you an opportunity to, to, to make a statement or your position on why you, you would like to, to see this. Or if you're content with the presentation uh, Chairman Houston has provided, that's uh, acceptable too. And uh, we'll give an opportunity following that for those that might be in opposition. And then, of course, we'll give the... <coughs> Uh, applicant the uh, last word to uh, respond to that before we uh, take it as a business matter. So with that, so Terry and Janelle Powers, are, are you are you here? Are you, would you care to add anything to Mr. Houston's uh, 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 request on your behalf? <laughs> you don't have to, but you're more than welcome. Is what I'm, what I'm suggesting. Well, all of that I can add is. Come on up. I don't know that you need a mic, but but you you do that. There you go. That's right. <laughs> That's all that I can add. She need a place to leave. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll accept that. If anybody poses, we'll let you have another uh, shot at it. So, so with that note, is there anybody present tonight that uh, wishes to speak in opposition of this rezone application? Nobody? All right. Here's five. If we just go ahead and vote on it then? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, with that, we're going to close this, uh, the public portion, uh, the public hearing. We'll take it as a matter here in a business setting. And I'll ask the commissioners then to consider the application or the request to rezone their 8.2 acre property from A2 to RR to give two acres to their daughter for a home site. Mr. Chair, being in my district, I'll be happy to make a recommendation to, to approve the rezone. Uh, second. All right. I have a motion and a second to approve. With that, is there any further discussion on, uh, on this application? Seeing any. We'll start with Commissioner Bettis. Yes. 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 All right. Done with that one. On to the next item, then, Mr. Houston. Okay, the next rezone request is for Roger and Starla Fleeman. They're requesting to rezone the 3.95 acre from A2 to R1 so the property can be subdivided to allow a home site for the daughter and her children. The property is located on Map 91, Parcel 27, District 4. The vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission was a vote of 7 to 0 to recommend approval of the rezoning request. <clears throat> All right. Roger and Starla. Okay, would you care to make any comment or whatever? Uh, then are you two ready? Are you satisfied and ready for us to vote on it? Okay. I give you a chance to say more, but. Uh, <coughs> I think you're. I think you said most of it in the first time around. So all right, we'll close the public portion and we'll have our uh, uh, take it back here for you. Uh, a vote on this. So the motion or the uh, application rather is to rezone 3.95 acres.
from A2, I'm sorry, to rezone their the portion of their 3.95 acre property from A2 to R1 to give one and a half acres to their daughter for a home site. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. I have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Are there any comments or any further discussion on this item? Seeing any, we'll go for the vote here. Start with Commissioner Kirk. Yes. 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 All right, folks. That's done. All right, Mr. Houston. Mr. Chairman, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, will take take up items three and four because they're dependent upon each other, and also because of the complexity of the situation involving colors and maps. We'll let Linda do the explaining and stuff. I, I had to get an explanation earlier, too. So <laughs> she, sorry. She, she explained it to the Planning Zone Commission, just laid it out, and I'm like, wow, that, I can't do that. That's good. Now, please, Ms. Borson, go ahead. I'm used to color coding everything. <laughs> We're used to color. That's right. Um, on your tax map that you would have had uh, in your packets that I sent to you, you would have one parcel that was highlighted pink and one that was yellow. Uh, both of these properties, this rezone request is contingent one upon the other. Um, the first one, uh, item number three on the agenda, uh, these requests are by Wesley Anglin. He is requesting to rezone uh, a portion of each one of these properties for a home site for his daughter. So what he's wanting to do is rezone a portion of the pink to combine with a portion of the yellow to create uh, approximately a two and a half to three acre parcel for her home site. And the remainder of each will be combined into one parcel that will be uh, the a, will be an A2 property. So, any questions on that? This, this I think uh, Lamar did say this was approved by the Planning and Zoning Board by a seven to zero vote. Seven to two on the combined. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. All right. I see Mr. Wesley back there. Do you, are you satisfied with that, or are you going to add anything to it? Well, Cody was picking it a while ago, so if we don't go through, we're going to let him move in with him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, then we're going to take a vote. Uh, the vote is to uh, approve the both rezone applications, and that is to Commissioner Doster. Yes. 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 All right, folks, we're done on that one, too, okay? Thank y'all. All right. Thank you. Okay, last one. I'm also going to turn the last one over to Linda, since there were some discussions that I wasn't privy to that may have more information to I understand. All right. Okay, the last and final request is by, <clears throat> excuse me, by Bro. Um, he was requesting to rezone a 10-acre portion of a 13 point seven seven acre parcel that he owns. Uh, this did go through the planning and zoning board. Um, it was denied by a vote of six to one. Um, we are, uh, or Mr. Monroe is asking for a postponement of this request being uh, voted on tonight um, because uh, come to find out um, a couple of the board members were looking at the wrong map. They were looking at the old map, and um, so afraid that the judgment was made on that old map, not the... The, the old land use. Yes, the old land use map, I'm sorry, uh, and not the one that was approved in 2017, of which put this property in high density area. But you said it was the correct map. Did, did you not to tell more? Well, I didn't look at the date, and I thought they had the correct map. I didn't look at the date on it. So, um, we're, um, Mr. Monroe would like a postponement of this for it to go back through the planning and zoning. Okay, that's my question. Mm -hmm. And this would be heard at the next set of uh, public hearings. Is that the 16th? Uh, it would be, yes, of April. Mm -hmm. And then back before you on, on your next. Are you asking for a specific date on that, or are you just wanting it? 
No, it, they, they it would determine. it would be it would be the next set of hearings. Oh, okay. Yeah, it would just he's oh. asking for a postponement okay. so that it can go back through PNZ. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what this board would actually need to do, if you agree with that, is vote to remand it back to PNZ. There you go. Okay. Okay. I, I, I prefer that. All right. All right. So, uh, well, then, without entering anything regarding the original request, then uh, we'll be looking then to uh, vote to approve remanding the uh, a rezone application before the P and board again. And I'm sorry. May, may I make a comment um, about that going back to planning and planning concerning the signage um, of the notification to the residents in the area? And it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and, and take public comment. Okay. Um, okay. And then, so go ahead I, I and apologize. I wasn't trying to interrupt you. I didn't want you to get no, to that. No, do, do me a favor. Just come forward and, and if I can get your name and your, your address, then, or, you know, we'd like to, to kind of track the folks here. So. Yeah. My name is Janelle McCain, and I reside at 110 Jasmine Drive. My property is adjacent to the property that is being requested to be rezoned if it is the rezoning request that. Is stated on the agenda. I understand that this request was amended um, during the planning and zoning meeting a couple of weeks ago. So we're, um, me and my neighbors are just a little confused about what is actually being requested again. However, um, I brought this up at the last meeting. The request to rezone that the signage, the notification, is was placed in a window in one of the build office buildings. Um, on conspicuous location, um, and I'll, I'll just read what's in in your in your document. If because of circumstances particular to the location of the property, the location chosen for the sign will be either inconspicuous or in, invisible from any well-traveled right-of-way, the sign may be posted not only on the property to be rezoned, but also in such a location not on the property to be rezoned that is likely to be seen by persons potentially interested in the, and that is on page 14.4, um, or it's not on page 14.4, it's item 14.4. So what we would like is, if this is being postponed and it's going to go back, that a sign be placed on James Holcomb Road. There is an area where that can be placed where everybody in that area can actually um, see that this zoning request has been made, because it will impact. James Holcomb Road, um, depending on what on what Mr. Monroe is planning to do. Um, if there's going to be more traffic there, this is already an area with a double track. Um, and we have constantly a train that just stops there. And you kind of have to do a crazy Ivan to get back up, get to Pope Mill, or get all the way back up the hole. You oftentimes are having to back into two lanes of very fast incoming traffic. Um, we've had issues with the road there. So this will impact that whole area. Oakland subdivision backs up to the property. There is a resident there. I don't know that she even knows that this request has been made um, since, you know, she might have been mailed something. We all know that things get lost in the mail. Um, so we, I'm just requesting that, you know, if this is going to go back, which is fine, um, that we have some kind of appropriate um, signage up there to notify the mm -hmm. people in the area. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait to find out what the actual application is and then we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to, how to approach that, okay, and uh, what's appropriate. We'll make, make the effort to make sure that we're following our guidance. So, all right, with that though, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and at least uh, we're going to vote now to uh, put this back in the PNZ uh, board hand. And uh, with that, uh, I don't think they have. So we're going to go ahead and uh, request the motion to uh, remove. Can I ask a question? I was just wondering yeah. which, which, what plan, which map were they looking? They were Did looking you? at the one that was prior to 2017. 2007. 07, I think. Yeah, the 07. <coughs> okay. Highway quarter. Okay. So, at this point, we'll uh, ask for a motion to remand back to planning and zone for additional consideration. So moved. 
I have a motion. A second. And a second. Any further discussion or comments on the question of point of clarity, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, as it goes back, it'll go back as a full new application afforded the full rights of this board. It's not a that, I, I'm glad you raised that. I was going to make the same comment. Um, I would certainly encourage the applicant to get with the office and make sure that it's re-advertised, reposted the whole process again since some procedural questions have been raised. Yeah. Okay. And that is the understanding, right? Okay. Any other questions or comments? Just a point of contact. I did have an opportunity to meet with Mr. Monroe on site and on. Um, and due to the nature of the area, I did encourage him to to take uh, take the liberties, if you would, to to speak to our uh, um, industrial development director, uh, Mr. Ginn, to see what what opportunities. On to uh, statements and remarks from citizens on an agenda item. We have one agenda item here tonight. Uh, item five, which is the discussion on 2000, uh, 2019 bid. Anybody care to make any kind of comment? Or? Okay. All right. Well, with that, we're going to go skip right past old into new, and we will go ahead and discuss. If you, each one of you has a copy of the. Um, the estimates that were presented, I've got, uh, Alan came in tonight, I'd like for Alan, if you, I'm going to let him be the uh, shield, if you will. That's not true. We're going to just, uh, if you would like for him to go over, you each have a, a breakdown of the road. It would, it should be obvious to you that there is only one bidder in this. It did uh, run for the required time. And if I'll mention this, and Alan can certainly correct me, but I believe due to the uh, volume of ongoing construction at this time, most large or most uh, companies that would normally bid are, are maxed out. So and with right. that, Alan, I'll let you kind of break down how these numbers came about, and then uh, ultimately it will be the board's decision tonight to vote to approve in total modify whatever your preference is on our, uh, our bids here. All right, out of the total, we got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven roads for a total of 11.25 miles. The tonnage is going to be about 11,640 tons of asphalt and everything else. Just by the increase from last year, asphalt has increased $9.70 since what we paid last year. Went from 5240 and we're going to be paying 6210 this year <clears throat> per ton. Per ton. If you average that out per the total tonnage here, that's 112,908 just in asphalt increase. So if we do all the roads and everything else, yes, 112,908. $9.70 per ton. I thought, I mean, that's. I didn't realize it was going to be up that much and everything else. Mm -hmm. Last year we paid 5240 the low bid this year. Yeah, got that for match. 62 to Friday. <coughs> Out of the match, we got to match what we are required for 30% is $230,050.89. That's what we have to spend to match the LMIG amount. The amount of overage is 307624.81. Over the amount that we have to spend. You don't know with all these roads. That's with all the that's correct. If we keep all the roads, we don't talk about it. That gives us a total amount that will come out of the SPLOS be five thirty seven six seventy five, matching the overage plus the amount the thirty percent that we have to we are required to spend anyway. So that's the basic. The, and in February, we were about what, one point, over, a little over one point. Two. That is correct in the mm -hmm. I mean, uh, in the SPLOS amount right now and everything else. That is correct. I'm sorry, at the end of February, what did you say? It was 1.3? Mm -hmm. Is it? I don't think it's quite that. High. I don't think. It, I yeah. think it's closer to 112. I, I don't know. We looked at the numbers. I might have been, we don't have March. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that's right. That's February. That's Maybe February. I did. Yeah. 
I think it was about 112. I don't think it was quite 1.3. I think it was a little high, I think. But I'm, Shoot, I may have just misread it then. Yeah. We're over. We're over. Right, we are over me. It's okay. A million okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what it was. I think it was 1,033,000. I think okay. it was. All right. I think that's exactly what it was. Okay. Thanks. Okay. No, and that's fine. I, I just want to make sure that we're all using the same number. So, so just we would be spending um, a shade over 300,000 more than the grant money in our matching funds. That is correct. <clears throat> be 307, 624, 81. And that road has to be done. It'll be done next year if it's not done this year. That's all up to the board, correct. That's what's been pushed in the past. It went from last year. We did bid that out last year. New Haven, and it got skipped over last year. So it's, it's one of those. And I know we have plenty more pushing ones for next year. I know we don't want to. The one we just got widened, Jones Chapel Shallow Road, that's definitely one that needs to be on next year. I think it'll hold out another year, but that's definitely one that needs to be. If not, we just wasted the state's money on that one. How long is that road? You know what I think? I'm going to guess 1.7. I've looked, never seen any different. You said Jones Chapel? Right? Jones Chapel Shallow. Mm -hmm. It's 1.7 or 2.1. I'm 2 not sure. 2.1, I believe. I think it might be 2.1. 2.1. It's definitely got to be. Yes. yes. If not, we just wasted all the amount. Yes. Don't travel shallow. It's 2.16 up here. Yeah. So, so a little over two miles. What uh, what we're running into though with Jones Chapel Shiloh, uh, Urban Kirk, and a number of there are a number yes. of other roads is unfortunately the base is deteriorating to the point that if, if we don't resurface, uh, much like what had to be done this year on or portions of Jones Chapel Shiloh Road. Is that has to be, um, uh, and I'm not sure what term they used. It's basically milled. They need to milled up and then re put back down. Everything has to make it a solid surface. Everything else. So they have alligator so bad. At a, at a much greater expense. So would it last a little longer doing that anyway? But if, if yes, you re no, right, correct. You re it, it would last longer. <laughs> yes. but, but the little portion that increased the cost of it. The little portion that you go up there and look was about 47,000. We extra spent on John Travel Shallow would have come out of our Spot. that come out of our and everything else. And, and the distance on that section. It was not very long. It wasn't, yeah. It was twenty nine in, probably two tenths maybe. Two tenths of a mile. Two of a mile. Maybe. And it was not the whole road either, just the bad spots in it. <clears throat> Any other questions to clarify? Does, does, does the quote that Garrett provided, is it lump sum or does it have any fluctuating indicators like liquid asphalt? <clears throat> no, this is guaranteed. That's what they will put that down for this year. The only guarantee, the only stipulation they had, they were concerned about getting the asp enough asphalt per day in there. They wanted 600 tons, 600 tons per day guaranteed. but. I called the ER guy back. He definitely could not definitely tell me he could or not. So there was going to be an increase in cost there that was going to be billed back to us. But we did get uh, C.W. Matthews to match, and Garrett rather use them anyway. And they said they can guarantee their asphalt and everything else. But they they started out at 6380, and they did come down to 6210 to match ER snails price. So so we're buying the asphalt direct. Correct, just to save the eight percent right off the top. Who's responsible for trucking? They are. That's all figured into cost and everything. <clears throat> we uh, decided last year to go ahead and purchase direct, just to, to even the uh, playing field as far as the bidding process. We're getting a lot of fluctuations in that. Right. Plus saving the eight percent right off the top and everything else. So yeah. off this much. Much. So, so that I understand, the uh, New Haven Church Road was actually the year before to be done, and it was it's been moved. Is it got right? moved to this year because of the amount. Just like this one, we were over the amount last year. The board wanted to stick to more of the more of the just the hundred thousand, whatever number it was last year. Stick to that number. <coughs> they didn't want to go over because we were not as fortunate as we are with this year with the. 
Yeah, is that the only one on this list? Yes, that's correct. All right. Just for meeting March, we would be probably at 1.1. One point one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as I did on the board. That's depending never. on about 50,000 when it come out and everything else. Mm -hmm. For that increase up there and everything. Mm -hmm. right. But we're at yes. But we are. That's and right. that's, that's the thing, it, you know, I mean, I forget what our deficit was. We were 1.7 or 8, yeah, I think, right. in the red. Yes. And it, they got moved back. I don't know if they I would hate to get it moved back again, and it seems like all of these roads certainly are in need. Is there? A, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, Mr. Bennett, that's newsworthy there. 1.8 uh, mm -hmm. negative, exactly. 1, 1 positive. Worked hard. We have Thanks. fiduciary Thanks. responsibility. Thanks. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, is. Uh, on the priorities of these roads, is there one particular, and again, I, I'm fine with doing it, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm just curious if, is there a need to designate one of these as a contingency project, that way if something happens in between, that we can pull that off the list of the contract? Each road is individual, we've priced it out that way, each road is individualized, so it's any one of them, or I did bid New Haven in two different increments, that's why I did that, because it was such a long road. So any one of these, the way it's listed, it could be pulled from the project, and they know that. But from staff level, is there a prioritization that one would be? Which one would you want? To I, you have to, I mean, legit, legitimately, you have to start with one to yeah. work your way through. And I'm assuming you've given that list to Snell, or you, I mean, to, to Gary, no. or they just? They know the whole list. That's all they got right now. Well, we well, have not approved anything to tell them where to start or anything else. They have the pricing, or they have the uh, we have the pricing on it. They haven't been green lighted on which no. roads to do. So, so uh, and and I understand this is what we when we when we established these as potential roads for paving. The idea was when they went on this list, they were racked and stacked. That's the way they should have been. Sometimes that gets changed because of the length and the total cost, obviously. Mm -hmm. But uh, so in answer to your question, I think. Uh, if there's a road that you felt had could, could push to next year or something like that, that's, that's if the, those I would probably say out of the condition out of all those I would say Piedmont Road is probably the best condition, but it's fixing it all. They're fixing about 65 more houses on that road, so a lot of yeah. truck traffic fixing up and down that road, and yeah. that would be doing one to fix it later or after they've gone through there instead of paving it and let them. Mess it up if they go back to Well, the beauty is if they fail, I don't know that you can hold them for the damage. That they no, do. not on Piedmont Road. Mm -hmm. No, um, just in the subject. We don't have another Joe Cooper yeah. issue. Dang, man. Joe Cooper, yes. That one has to be. I mean, Joe Graham. Joe Graham. What? No, I was talking about I got you messing up. Yes. Joe Cooper Road over there, and they actually came back and fixed it. They are still in the process I of fixing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Myself and did that. And Garrett understands that y'all are voting on the 22nd. Right. Yeah, this for discussion, and then, and then uh, of course the uh, um, one of the last you know considerations in this is these are uh, I know that all these roads have been identified. Um, the only the only thing, and I ordinarily I I would also I I, I tell you to stick with the plan and and, and keep it under the budgeted amount or roughly the budgeted amount. Um, I go back to the $112,908 increase from last year to this year though in material. Right. It may right. be more extra. Mm -hmm. right. Any uh, further discussion on this? We'll, like I said, we'll vote on it. Uh, I will make sure uh, Brickyard Road, that does not include city limits. Also Crawford W. Long Street does not include city limits. Let's go up to the city limits and stop right there. So make sure. Clarify those on those two roads. And then the other one would be McGinnis Chandler Road. That is not the entire length of the road. That is just the triple surface portion. And Commissioner Allen knows the portion of that. It's be the end from on Black start on Black Creek until they get to the portion that did they already have resurfaced already way back when. So at least make sure they're fixing all the potholes. Make sure that they figure out that the old rotted stump or something on the drive under there. 
I know the people out there that made it. When they first got the road in, you know, yeah, yeah. And I encourage you, if, if, you know, during the course of the next few weeks or whatever, if you've got thoughts or if there's anything that needs to be relooked at on that, uh, contact Alan Harris and just make sure, you know, I'd like for us to have the, the best and most complete information when we meet back and, and decide on And that. also, while we're talking about LB, go ahead and get me a list for next year. Before we know it, we're going to be time to, if y'all want me to do the traffic counts on any particular road, y'all let me know. We can look at the state numbers and then we can also put out our own traffic counters if we want right. to do it by population, <clears throat> number of vehicles going down the road, and whatever else on priority of and everything. Okay. We'll try to have a kind of a, a, a combined project list of. Elbing slash uh, the, the roads that the county would consider uh, as as projects. This is the, the short list that you're talking about. We always want to do what we can with Elbing, but you got to realize sometimes, you know, uh, you, you throw in a nice commerce road, and I'll, I'll, I'll pretty much take care of it for the year. So that's right. Uh, that real nice. You know, yeah. So yeah, well, there's a lot of nice roads out there, though, and, and unfortunately, we have, it, it, when it, uh, they're connecting roads when they're when they're highly traveled, joining two highways and everything, they're, they're just going to be Major a, lot, a lot of use on them. Yep. So. I would I would hate to, you know, in favor of a curb and then not pay this section with the pave that one. You know what I'm saying? Oh, New Haven is trying to do this one and then do that. But if you're going to split them up, yeah. Right. But that, you're talking about New Haven, right? That's right. right. Yeah, right. just yeah. that portion to it. Right. It's just from an urban curve yeah. to Macedonia, then Macedonia, then two one thirty four. I just got them bit that way because since it was such a long road, and I thought we got a bit last yeah. year. And I, and I got a lot of input on that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments for Alan, or any further discussion on this? Well, so that's fine. We'll try to. I know what trip. Yeah. All right. I'll wait around for Rhoda. All right. Uh, well, that, that that would be our next item. Uh, any any anybody have anything? Uh, uh, I think we had a gentleman in today requesting a, a, a look see at John Down and Hudson River Church Road. So the, there was some patchwork done there. I believe it was when our our uh, patch wagon was down and. They had some temp fill in there. I, I think the temp has it done got up to that. So. At the intersection? Yeah, at the intersection, yeah. It's, it's primarily as it was described where uh, vehicles stop and then as they proceed through, they're, they're, they're digging it out. <coughs> Any other update? Any? Thing you'd like to and again, we have it as a placeholder on our on our agenda. I would hope that you wouldn't wait for it to roll around on this. If you got something at any time, please call. Yeah, please call them. Absolutely. Uh, one question: We are, I guess, in better shape on our dirt roads. We have finally made it back around. Yes, a lot better. We are probably coming around. The upper end up here, fixing to come back across down the Opal Wildcat Bridge Road, going back towards Harris and everything else. The weather has really, really helped get on so, top of that and everything. So you sure say you're dusty. going towards Harrison now? It will be, correct. Okay. It's sure a dusty out, you know, if you can do something about it. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no. You scrape mine now. It's really dead. They're just they're green now. Yes, we did start mowing grass. Yeah, today, the so track might come back on. That's right. It it helped. It, it, it was it, hey, it's finer dust anyhow. Uh, any urgent matters here tonight? Uh, need for executive. Yes, sir. All I need is a motion to adjourn. Hope oh, Trip's not here. Motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. I got a motion. Second. Commissioner Bettis. Yes. Kirk. Yes. 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 All right, we're done. Thank you all. Mm -hmm.